Oh yeah. Look at this. Oh man. Look at this. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Hey, good people. I'm Dave Porter, and today we're taking a look at this brand new Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Ray series five string bass. Ernie Ball joined forces with the Finnish company Dark Glass Electronics to make this killer limited series bass with a built in Dark Glass Alpha Omega preamp. So in today's video, we're going to listen to some finger styles, some slap and pick demos on the clean alpha and omega preamp circuits. We're also going to take a quick look at my Dark Glass Microtubes B7K Ultra pedal. We're going to see which features are similar, which ones are different, the pros and cons of having a distortion preamp built right into a bass versus a pedal, and if you're like me, why you might prefer to have both. So let's get started. The Dark Rays series bass comes in several finishes, Obsidian Black, Starry Night, and this one in White Sparkle. It's a 34-inch scale bass with a roasted maple neck and an ebony fretboard with an 11-inch radius. 22 stainless steel frets with a 5-bolt sculpted neck joint. We have a standard Stingray humbucker with neodymium magnets going into a custom 18-volt dark glass 2-band EQ preamp. One of the many awesome things about the Dark Glass range of products is the ability to completely control the distortion circuit across frequencies. The Microtubes B7K Ultra really gives you the ability to dial in the right amount of distortion and blend it into whatever sonic territory you prefer. What I mean by that is you can use the control switches to boost or dial back distortion in highs, mids, or lows, and EQ to boost not only the high and low frequencies, but those all-important low, mid, and high, mid frequencies. Listen to how I can place the distortion in specific ranges and how musical and customizable it is. Right now I have the distortion kind of set in a little bit of a 1K range and um, it's not much in the treble area. Uh, it's just kind of slightly boosted in those high mids. It sounds something like this. You can kind of hear it in there. Just a little bit of grit. boost these highs, I can set it up. I'm boosting the signal that's going into the distortion circuit in the high range area, those high mid areas. Definitely coming out more. I prefer to leave that flat. And there's no distortion in the bottom end. And that's the way an engineer would set this up. I mean, they wouldn't, you, you set it up. If you want distortion in the bottom end, you can certainly go that direction. That's more in that low mid um, area, but um, if you wanted to get there, you could. Um, typically, you'd want to leave your low end really clean. And if you're going to do uh, a little bit of saturation or overdrive or grit, you leave it in the higher end. It kind of gets in depth with how you do this in a DAW like Logic and how you would create multiple tracks. Um, but I just want to give you a quick demo of the uh, B7K uh, and just how, I mean, just tweakable it is. I mean, you can go anywhere from subtle the way I had it to you can crank your distortion down. <laughs> Uh, all right, 
Enough playing around with this, let's get back to the demo. Now we really can't compare the Music Man Dark Ray to a Dark Class B7K pedal because you simply can't build all of that control into a bass. I mean, you'd have dip switches and, and buttons everywhere and this thing would be covered up and look ridiculous. But what you do have is amazing control over two very distinct types of distortion and the ability to blend uh, the distorted signal with your clean signal right here at the bass. Let's walk through the controls. First, you have a volume. Then there's a distortion gain control, which, dis which controls how much distortion you're dialing in. It can go anywhere from hardly anything. total control there of, of how much distortion you're blending in. I've got the blends, speaking of, the next switch here, or the next knob, is the blend control. So this blends the distortion with your clean signal. So all the way back, you can't hear that distortion anymore. Start to blend that in. Sorry, I had the distortion off. Blending it in with the clean signal more and now all the way up all distortion and yeah i think in this case i'm not sure how they have this set up but i still hear clean bottom end um, i think the blend even at 100 percent, i think you still have clean signal coming through it's not all the distortion circuit um, but that's It's an awful lot of distortion, so I might be wrong on that, uh, but that's just the way I interpreted that at the beginning. Um, you've also got treble and bass. Both have a center detent, so you know where you're at. Then there's the three position switch. All the way in first position is clean. Second position is the alpha distortion circuit, indicated by the red LED. Position three is the Omega distortion circuit, and that's indicated by the blue LED. So you really know where you're at with this thing, uh, even on a dark stage. And the lights are just freaking cool, right? Yeah. So the Alpha is a punchy and tight type of distortion, and it's got a lot of definition to it. The Omega is really what they describe as brutal and raw. Uh, to me, it sounds more like a fuzz than it does a distortion. Um, but I, I love that um, because it's not too fizzy up on the top end. Uh, there's nothing worse than a fizzy distortion. I'd rather be fuzzy and have, be it toothy than be fizzy up on the, the high end. Let's listen to a little bit like down low. Let's just maybe do like 25 and 25 on that circuit. I'm going to keep the bass and the treble around 50%. <laughs> Just got that nice bit of distortion kind of in the background. You can dial that back if you want some grit. That's so nice. And the ability to blend that in if I wanted more. Or if I want to blend it back, maybe like a quarter. So nice. The bass itself is really well made. It features all the new Stingray special upgrades that Music Man implemented a few years ago. Since the three-way switch is being occupied by the dark glass preamps, the pickup stays in parallel mode. This is a limited series bass, and this one is number 14 out of 100, as you can see on the heel plate here. It also has a laser etch of the Dark Glass logo and the Music Man logo. On its own, this is a great sounding bass with a ton of value. These EQ controls are just super, super. I mean, there's tons of bass in this thing. That's 100%.
There's so much there, I just can't imagine using all of it. Backing the treble all the way off. It's 50%. 100%. nice to have all that at your at your disposal if you would want it but um, subtle moves on this are probably the best The distortion circuit is really touch sensitive as you can hear. Backing off and playing lighter or harder really showcases how musical and expressive the dark glass preamp can be at lower levels. To me, it kind of sounds like the EQ is before the preamp uh, or it's side chain in some way because when you add to it, it's not just EQ. I, I feel like it adds a little bit of distortion. Could be wrong on that, but it sounds like it also affects the drive a little bit. Let's take a listen to some examples running in different genres. I'm running into the dark glass uh, BK with no distortion and the settings are pretty level. And from there I'm going into the Universal Audio Apollo Twin uh, with some slight compression there, but no EQ. So here we go. <laughs>
<laughs> Man, I love this thing. All right, it's time to wrap things up. And all I can say is, wow, this is such a great bass. It's super well made. It has tons of that funky Stingray tone and vibe that we love. Plus, it's got this great dark glass circuit in it. This bass is just crazy fun. It makes you want to grab it and play it. You need it in your collection. So that's all for this review. Please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon. Take care, everybody.